everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our new series on a technicality. What we're going to be doing today is walking you through how to play light gun arcade PCBs at home. When I first wanted to cover the 3DO M2 and some of the uh, light gun games, I realized that there was real dearth of information online as to how to actually make that work, so that's what we're going to be going over right now. On the left you have a super gun, it's the Retro Electronic Super Gun Pro. It's decent, I wouldn't highly recommend it, but it does work for this function. In the middle on the top, you're going to see a SCART to SCART cable. Um, that has a resistor installed to bring it down to 75 ohm from a TTL 5 volt signal. Arcade boards are going to be using that 5 volt signal. When we use the Sony PVM, that commercial hardware can handle that voltage. But if you're going to be playing non-arcade light gun games at home, you know, just standard arcade games through a frame meister or something like that, you are going to want to bring that voltage down just for safety. Um, below that, there's going to be a JAMA extension, just because it is quite easy to work with that extension when you need to move the super gun away from PCBs. On the bottom right hand corner, you're going to have a SCART to BNC breakout cable. That's made by a person, Wookie Win on eBay. Um, I paid for that cable. This isn't a sponsored video, but I will leave the link below to his equipment. That way, if you need to pick one up, you can. I highly recommend his cables. His customer service is great. And as far as the cable is concerned, the build quality is quite excellent. Top right hand corner, you're going to just have a DB15 to DB15 cable, one end male, one end female. You do need to program a start and coin button. You can switch the PCB over to free play, but if you do need to use coins or for that initial menu setup, you are going to want to use that. For the Super Gun, I have a 450 watt SFX power supply. It's way overkill, but it's what I have sitting around and it definitely works. So what you're going to be looking at here is just kind of the cabling setup to get that signal out. You're going to see that the SCART cable is coming out of the super gun and it is going into the BNC breakout cable, which we're then going to put into the back of the PVM. The most important thing when you're dealing with this signal is that you have to maintain your sync signal from the super gun and the arcade PCB into the television. Otherwise, your gun is not going to work as it does depend on that sync signal to be able to function. This is just a little top-down overview of the arcade stick that I built for this project. It's made out of a cigar case. It's got Sanwa and Sumitsu parts in there. Um, arcade sticks, they work really well in cigar boxes. I really like this. It took me a couple weeks to build it. It is my first attempt, but as far as um, for my hand, it is quite good. Just because I have smaller hands, I made something that was definitely going to work more towards me. It's a fun project. If you guys are curious about how I did that, leave some comments below. Maybe I'll put a video up in regards to how I built that stick. What you're looking at right now is the back of my PVM. And we're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the red, the blue, and the green BNC cables into their appropriate ins in the back of the television. And then we're going to be hooking up the external sink in as well. You need a monitor that has BNC in. You have to be able to have that sync signal be an independent line in. That's what the arcade light gun functions on. Um, when you pull the trigger, it uses the refresh rates of televisions and that sync signal to be able to register hits. So you do need to find a PVM to do this, or you do need to modify a traditional CRT to take RGB in with sync. Obviously, if you have an arcade monitor, then you can just hook it up directly. But this video is kind of designed for people that want to be using these PCBs at home and don't have space for an arcade cabinet like I unfortunately don't. So it's a nice alternative. So what you're looking at here is the entire rat's nest of cables. I didn't do this super clean. It's just more for illustration purposes. So you're going to see the SCART cable is going to leave the super gun and it's going to go all the way over here to that BNC breakout cable, which is then going to plug into the back of the PVM, red, blue, green, and your sync signal. That's what's going to effectively allow you to get your video and to use the light gun. Over here, we just have that JAMA harness extension. One end's going from the super gun. The other end's going into that 3DO M2. And then you just have the super gun and power supply itself. It's a decent setup. It works for most things. It does uh, generate a negative 5 volt signal as well, so that's useful. And then you just have that DB15 connector going up into the actual control unit. So here you'll see the game is running effectively on the PVM. It's a 14L5 model. I'd love to get a 20 inch, but obviously they are quite expensive. You see the gun right there. We're going to put some coins into the game and we're going to hit start. And you will see that the light gun does function perfectly fine on the PVM. So that's basically uh, how you adapt an arcade light gun PCB over to work on a traditional television PVM. 
you can modify old CRTs to have these connections. It is a quite involved process, but there are some schematics and tutorials online. But as far as being able to enjoy these games on an arcade cabinet, this is the easiest method I found to do so. It is time consuming. It is not cheap. But if it is something that you really want to do, it is definitely possible. I will leave links in the description down below to where I acquired the parts. If you guys have any questions or if you're not sure of anything, feel free to leave a question in the comments below and I'll answer anything I can. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. Um, we'll upload another one of these videos when we find another topic that we want to address. Short of that, if you could hit the thumbs up and subscribe button down below, we'd really appreciate it. And I hope you guys are enjoying Season 2 of Video Game Esoterica. Thanks so much for watching. You guys have a good rest of your week, and we'll see you Tuesday for another episode of the main series.